This video will discuss entropy in statistical mechanics. So we'll remind ourselves that in statistical mechanics, out of all the energy levels that our system has available to it, the probability of the system being in that energy level is equal to 1 over the partition function Q times the degeneracy, the number of states in that energy level, G sub i, times e to the minus beta ei, the Boltzmann factor, where beta is 1 over the Boltzmann constant times the temperature. Here the partition function is the sum over all the energy levels of the degeneracy of that level times the Boltzmann factor of that level, e to the minus beta ei, where ei is the energy of that energy level. In the previous video we looked at the Gibbs entropy formula, which says that the entropy of a system is equal to the negative Boltzmann constant times the sum over all states of the probability of that state times the natural log of the probability of that state. So just as we have an expression in statistical mechanics for the energy of the system as a weighted average of all the energy levels, similarly we can take this expression here and derive an expression just in terms of the partition function as we did for the energy where we don't know necessarily the probabilities of all the individual levels, but we do know the total partition function of the system. So when we have the total partition function of the system, but we're not necessarily concerned about the individual probabilities, what we can say is that the entropy of the system equals the Boltzmann constant times the temperature times the partial derivative of the natural log of the partition function with respect to temperature plus the Boltzmann constant times the natural log of the partition function. So we're going to look at this for the case of translational, rotational, vibrational, and electronic partition functions of atoms and molecules to see what we get. All right, for translations, uh, the translational partition function is equal to v to the n over n factorial, 2 pi m k t over h squared to the 3 n over 2, V is volume of the system, N is the number of particles, M is the mass of each particle, K the Boltzmann constant, T the temperature, and H is Planck's constant. All right, um, according to Stirling's approximation, the, log the logarithm of N factorial is equal to N log N minus N for large N. So Avogadro's number of particles is a very large N, so this is a very accurate approximation for numbers that large. So the natural log of Q trans is equal to 3n over 2 log 2 pi mkt over h squared. Take the exponent out, take that part out, plus n log v, taking down the exponent, separating that part, minus n log n plus n, because I have the log of 1 over n factorial, which is minus log n factorial. When I take the derivative with respect to temperature, only terms that have temperature in them matter. And when I do that here, you can convince yourself that the partial derivative of this with respect to t is 3n over 2t. All right, so if I do kt times that derivative plus k times this natural log, what I'm going to get in the end is this following equation once everything sorts itself out. I'm going to get that the translational entropy of an ideal gas is equal to the number of particles times the Boltzmann constant times the quantity 5 halves plus the natural log of quantity 2 pi mkt over h squared to the 3 halves times v over n. So this is actually uh, an equation called the Sacher tetrode equation. This is true for all atoms and molecules and it's an extremely accurate approximation for the entropy, the translational entropy of an ideal gas for temperatures above about 15 Kelvin. So this is the translational entropy. This is the dominant contribution to the entropy of, of ideal gas particles because there are an enormous number of states of translational motion which have a non-zero probability for ideal gases at room temperatures around 300 Kelvin. All right, our rotational partition function is T over sigma theta rote to the N, temperature, uh, symmetry number, and rotational temperature. 
The rotational temperature is usually something located you can look up in tables for simple molecules. Sigma for he heteronuclear diatomics is 1 and homonuclear diatomics is 2. For a general polyatomic molecule, it's more complicated than that. And I should actually include that here for my polyatomic, uh, my polyatomic equation. Let me do that. There we go. Okay, so if I take the natural log of this, take the derivative with respect to temperature, include all those things in the final result, what I get is that my rotational entropy for a diatomic or a linear molecule at temperatures which are much greater than the rotational temperature, which 300 Kelvin is for most diatomic molecules, I get the rotational entropy is NK times 1 plus natural log of T over sigma theta rote. For polyatomics, I have three rotational temperatures for each of the three Cartesian dimensions, and I get NK times 3 halves plus 1 half natural log of pi t cubed over theta a, theta b, theta c. Where I didn't throw my sigma in because I just threw it in now, I'll have that corrected in future versions, I guess. All right, so that was our nonlinear polyatomics where the temperature is much greater than each of the rotational temperatures. For vibrations, our vibrational partition function for a diatomic with a single vibrational mode is e to the minus rotational sorry e to the minus vibrational temperature over 2 times t over 1 minus e to the theta v over t i think this should be a minus as well all right so e to the minus theta v over t all right and if i take the logarithm and derivatives of this this gives me a slightly more complicated expression where the vibrational entropy is NK times vibrational temperature over temperature, 1 over E to the vibrational temperature over T minus 1, minus natural log of 1 minus E to the minus theta V over T. This one, that's uh, basically the exact result for diatomics under the harmonic oscillator approximation. For So that's a single vibrational mode. For polyatomic molecules, they have more vibrational modes, 3n minus 5 if they're linear, 3n minus 6 if they're nonlinear. So you just have a similar expression for each vibrational mode that adds up to the total vibrational entropy. This one is the, the craziest to look at and the most abstract looking just based off the mathematical form. But in the next chapter, we'll have an example where I actually do this for a diatomic molecule, and we'll see what these what these functions look like versus temperature and what they end up being in practice. Then finally, we have the electronic partition function, which is the degeneracy of the ground state times e to the dissociation energy over kT all to the n. And the electronic entropy then ends up being number of particles times Boltzmann constant times the natural log of the degeneracy of the ground state. For most atoms and molecules, that is going to be zero because g1 equals one and for some special cases g1 equals something else like if they're unpaired electrons it might be a doublet or a triplet being two or three but for most atoms and molecules this is our electronic entropy which ends up being zero so our total energy of the molecule ends up being a sum of these contributions the greatest contribution from translations then a significant contribution from rotations, and usually a very, very small contribution from vibrations, and then if there's any contribution from uh, the electronic energy levels, it is independent of temperature and just comes from the fact of the ground state of the molecule being either a singlet or some non-zero or some non-one uh, multiplicity.